Psalms 58. To the chief musician, Al Tirsith, which is destroy not, Mitchum, which is a prayer of David. I want you to remind you that this is a prayer of David. But we're going to read 11 verses. David is not one of them men, you know, the golden rule. David does not pray like Jesus taught us and the apostles to love your enemies. <laughs> David is a, shows us he is an, a, another dispensation. It's not the gospel dispensation and the church age dispensation. And I believe the Gospels are in a whole different dispensation because you don't have the New Testament until someone dies and Jesus doesn't die in the Gospels to the end chapter. And yet you have somebody living 33 and a half years who completely fulfilled and accomplished the law that no one ever done. And as far as you can see, it looks like in Israel, no one could die. Everyone that died around Jesus, he, he resurrected. So I'm going to say the Bible describes Old Testament, the Gospels, and the New Testament. And when you see Jesus saying, and the apostles teaching, especially John, in 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, you know, love your enemy. And he that hateth his brother is a murderer. Going to all the way back to Cain. Now we know David and his sins and the adultery and the murder. But when you look at what David's going to say in this prayer to God about his enemy, this is not something for a Christian to pray. If you do, you're violent. I don't think God's going to listen to you. Now watch. Do you indeed for sure speak righteousness, O congregation? Question mark. A group of people. David is speaking to in the Old Testament. Do you, you know, are you righteous? Do you speak righteous? Do ye judge uprightly, correctly, properly, O ye sons of men? And the question is not to Israel. The question is not to Gentile. You, you children of men. The group of people I'm standing before, are you so righteous in words? And you able to judge uprightly? Then he's going to blast them. Yay. <laughs> That's what the devil said. In heart, inside of you, your emotion, your feeling that you cannot deny. You know, you may say to somebody, oh, I love you. But in your heart, hate them. In heart, ye work wickedness. David is telling the truth. David is saying what Paul said. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you guys are wickeder. Ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. You are involved with wickedness and you are involved with violence. And it's violence that God told us in Genesis that it's the violence in the earth that God said, hey, Noah, build that ark. I'm, I'm, I'm destroying it all. Including the animals. Take male and female and by sevens the clean animal because of the violence that's happening, I'm done. That wickedness David is saying, it's what you are. And we're going to see a tribulation type of passage here. And to the Antichrist, but he says the sons of men. The wicked men. Verse 1. Now he said, follow the wicked as, as the Antichrist, but sons of men. The Antichrist will be born too. 
as Jesus Christ was born. And Paul, we have brothers and sisters like Jesus had. He's the complete opposite of Jesus. You say, well, is he going to be virgin born? Well, no. Something to it. What? I don't know. Are exchanged. That means withdrawn or alienated from the womb. They go astray. They go astray as soon as they be born speaking lies. Well, that's the whole leadership of the Antichrist. But as far as men, men lie from very agehood. What age? As soon as they tell their mother and father, it wasn't me and it was me. And I don't know what age that is, but within speaking. A baby in a crib will lie to you. You say, well, how can you do that? He'll cry and he's not wet. He's not pooping himself. He's not hungry. He just wants attention. So he come to his mind, hey, if I open up my lungs, that whatever that thing is, is going to come and give me my comfort. I just want attention. Wah! And that kid don't need nothing. That's a liar. They're poison. We know what poison is. It's like the poison of a serpent. Well, we know that serpent. Revelation chapter 12, Genesis chapter 3. Deuteronomy 23, speaks about alcohol. They are like the deaf adder, can't hear, that stoppeth her ear. There's no listening. I want to get involved with a snake that can't hear you. Because watch what he says next. Which will not hearken to the voice of charmers. That's the first time that word shows up. And the only other place is Isaiah 19.3. Charming, the only place in that Bible. Never so wisely. So have you ever heard somebody say his friend? He's just so charming. According to the Bible, that statement is for a snake. A snake handler. One that deals with snakes. And I found out someone told me when it comes to that snake. That snake charming and all that. Oh, how can they do that? Guy told me he says they break the teeth. We're gonna see that in a moment. They break the fangs of that of that of that serpent. So if it did bite you, it ain't gonna do no damage. Break their teeth, oh God. That's a great prayer, David. This is a prayer of David for his enemy. Break their teeth, O oh God. They can't eat. They're prone for infection. Infection. There'll be pain. In their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the lion. Young lions, O oh Lord. Lions is the devil in the Bible. Here's plural. Those who go after the devil. Those who follow the devil. Our adversary, the devil, goes about as a lion seeking he may devour. David says, well, break those teeth so he can't devour. And there's only one that can do that. And that's when Jesus Christ comes in the second advent. No man, no military, no strength, no healing signs, no wonders, no... Miracle is ever going to defeat the Antichrist and his men and the devil and his people except Jesus Christ. Let them melt away as water which runneth continually. You know, you let the water go and it just goes. It goes away. When he bendeth his bow to shoot his arrow. Well, it's quite interesting. Let's go to Revelation chapter 5. 
and let's see the Antichrist. Let's see what he has. At Revelation 6. Revelation 6, 1. And I saw them, the Lamb, Jesus, open one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one to four be saying, Come and see. And I saw, behold, a white horse, not Jesus, and he that sat on him had a bow. Oh, there we go. And a crown was given to him, and he went forth to conquer, and to conquer there's no arrow. You say, well, that we saw arrows and a bow, what we just read, but watch. The Antichrist comes in and destroys people with his peace. He doesn't lift up a gun. He doesn't lift up a sword. He comes in with peace. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. And there went, went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him, therefore, to take peace, verse 2, from the earth, we just read earth, and David, that they should kill one another, and it was given to him a great sword, war. So when the Antichrist comes, he's coming with peace, and he's going to end, evidently end up with a world war. Look at the words of David using and look what the scriptures say. You could not match this and by chance to write what has been written. John has not even been thought of when David's writing what he's writing now. David has never seen the, the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation hasn't even been written. As a snail which melted. That's a funny expression. David's looking at a snail and he sees that little slime trailer. Oh, gee, eventually he's going to just wear himself out. Let every one of them pass away. As that snail would just keep going, eventually die out, and his body would rot and that shell would be remained. Let these evil people, wicked people be. Great prayer, David. I can see David listen to, listen to Peter say, love your enemy. I can see him speaking up like Peter would speak up. Not me. Kill him, Lord. What he's saying. Like the untimely birth of a woman, stillborn, death, that they may not see the sun. Yeah. David's saying, if that's going to be an evil, wicked uh, child, let him die in, in pregnancy. Let him die in birth. So when he comes out of the womb, he's not even going to see the sun. He's not going to see light. That's not how we're to pray. Some people do got that impression. Some people, we're not to pray like that. Before your pots can feel the thorns, that's the way they clean them. Or that's the way they, they put cooking pot. They gather up thorns and all that, and it'll be on a fire. He shall take away, he shall take them away as with a whirlwind, and a whirlwind causes destruction, misplaces things, both living and in his wrath. In the wrath of God, he's going to kill them. In the middle, or toward the end of the book of Job, Job is visited by the Lord. And Job's a picture of the tribulation saint, and the Lord shows up in a whirlwind. Something about that. Chapter, uh, verse 10 and 11, our second advent. He goes eight verses about the wicked man. Nine, he comes with the judgment of God in 10 and 11. You see, you see the uh, second advent. The righteous shall rejoice when he sees the vengeance. 
when Christ comes back, all the saints that are behind him, all those people of Israel that are wherever God has prepared them, we say to the future, there's going to be great rejoicing when Jesus judges the wicked and tramples on them. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Revelation 14. Fourteen, eighteen. Revelation 14. And David had no idea. Another angel came out of the from the altar in heaven and had power over fire and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for the grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it in the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city. The blood came out of the winepress even unto the horse, the horse bridle, by the space of a thousand six hundred furlongs. And guess who that horse is? The white horse of Jesus. There it is. Shall wash his feet in the blood of the, the wicked. So that a man shall say. Verily there is a reward for the righteous. Sheep nations. And verily he is a God that judges in the earth. Judges between the sheep. And the goats. He's already judged the Christian saints of the church. He's coming to judge the nation of Israel. He's coming to judge Gentile powers at the second advent. 